Hi everyone and welcome back to today's biology scientific skills videos. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to calculate a percentage change. So this is something that people find sometimes quite challenging. It does come up quite a lot, uh, particularly in some National 5 questions where you're being asked about the results of an experiment. So for example, you could be given some sort of table like this, where you're given a, a beaker or a sample or an experiment, whatever it is, and you're being given both the initial mass or number or height, any sort of value there, and you're also given the final mass. And from that, you're being asked to calculate the percentage change between these two numbers. So let's go around how we actually tackle these questions. There's all the information you need, is really from this table and the main thing we're going to start off with is to find the difference between the final value and the original value so effectively looking at what is the change between the original and the final uh, values so to start off with in this example the difference for beaker a would be that the final mass was 60 grams but the original mass was 50 grams so 60 take away 50 gives us a difference of 10. Nice and easy to start with. So the main thing we're looking for just to start off calculating percentage change is what is the difference between these two numbers. Now, it can be positive if it's a, going to be a percentage increase, but bear in mind it could also be negative. So for example, the mass might decrease, the height might decrease, the number might decrease, for example. So just be careful if you're showing either a plus or a negative value. So with this difference of 10, we now need to divide that difference by the original value. So what we're really doing here is we're comparing that difference between what the original value actually was. Has it went up or down? If so, by how much? So again, in this uh, example here, we have a difference of 10, but we're going to divide it by 50, which was the original mass. Once you do that, you end up with a value of 0 0.2. So we're almost there. Once we have this value of 0 0.2, what you then do is you would multiply this number by 100 in order to get your percentage change. So 0 0.2 multiplied by 100 gives you an answer of 20%. And again, because it's a positive value, I would add a plus in here or say an increase of 20%. That means that from the original mass in this example to the final mass, there has been a percentage increase of 20%. So I'll go for another example here. You can maybe pause the video and try it yourself. Uh, but again, this is fairly similar. This time we're looking at a sample and there's slightly different numbers going on. But the original mass in grams of this sample was 50. And then it's had a fairly massive uh, increase to its final mass in grams of 700. So again, if you want to pause the video just now, I've left the instructions just on this slide here. If you want to give this a go yourself, we can talk through this example. Okay, so for this one here, again, just following the same structure every single time you come across a percentage change question, you should start it off, as always, with finding the difference. So the difference in this case, the final mass was 700 grams, and then the original mass was 50. So your difference here was 650. Once we find the difference, we will then divide the difference by that original value, which was 50. So 650 divided by 50 gives us an answer of 13. And then in this case, uh, 13 times 100 in order to give us our percentage change of value. Again, it's a positive. So we either add a plus there or say increase of 1,300%. So again, a very large one, but it can show uh, how large or how substantial this increase is. So hopefully you're finding these okay. We're just going to go for one last example, which is a past paper question to see how to apply this um, in a different exam question. So this is a question from a few years ago uh, from National 5, where you looked at the buildup of DDT concentration in a food chain. So as always, make sure you take the time to actually properly read the question. Don't get scared from the numbers and make sure you either highlight or circle uh, the numbers you're wanting to look at. Don't get confused by them. So I'll talk through this example and you can, you can go and try this yourself. But DDT can be sprayed onto crops in order to kill insects. It can be washed off the crops by rainwater and then flow into rivers where it accumulates in food chains. A typical freshwater food chain and the concentration of DDT in each organism is sown below. So we have a food chain here of an algae, a stickleback, a trout and an osprey and you have these DDT 
concentration values for uh, 0 0.001 for the algae, we have 2 for the stickleback, 5 for the trout, and 20 for the osprey. So straight away you can see there's an increase each time, so there's going to be a positive increase here. But the question asks you what the percentage increase in DDT concentration between the trout and the osprey is. So ignore these values at the start here, we are only focusing on the trout and the osprey. So in this case, it's not like they've gave you results from the experiment, they're asking to just focus on these two numbers. So the initial or the original value was five, and then we can see there's been an increase to this final value in the osprey of 20. So again, if you try and use those steps from before, if you want to pause the video now, I'll now go through how you work out this question. Okay, so hopefully you've given this a go and uh, we have a look at this. So again, as always, we're finding the difference. That's the key thing in these questions. So the difference between the final value of 20 and the uh, original value of five would be 15. So 15 is our difference. We're going to divide 15 by the original value, which they've given you for the trout. Remember, you're ignoring algae and stickleback. It's asking for the percentage increase between the trout and the offspring. So 15 divided by five gives you a value of three. And finally, we multiply that three by 100 to give us an answer of 300%, or an increase of 300%, which in this case would be C. So always double check your working out just to make sure you've not made a mistake. Also make sure you do all of these stages individually. Don't try and put them all into the calculator and press equals, it can mess things up. So hopefully you found this video useful and if you follow all these steps, you'll be able to calculate any percentage change question you come across. Good luck.